There have been massive updates to the AQA psychology specification, and I want to take a few minutes to review them. Importantly, the updates will first affect the AS exams in the summer of 2026 and the A-level exams in the summer of 2027. So while these changes are huge, and you probably want to know what they are, if you're watching this video when it was first uploaded and you've already started your course, your exams will run with the current specification. I'm going to keep this bar at the bottom of the screen for the whole video so there's no confusion. But even if the updated spec doesn't affect you directly, you probably still want to know what's going on. So I'm going to give my initial impressions first, and then if you want more details on everything that's changed, I'm going to go into a deeper dive into each individual unit. So the headline is that lots of content's been cut. It's hard to tell exactly, but looking at each page, my gut tells me it's about 15 to 20%, and very little has been added. This should be a bit of a game changer for students and teachers. Now, as a teacher, these changes are really welcome, as psychology at A-level always felt like it had a bit too much content to cover, making teaching feel like a race to teach all of the content before the exam, with not enough time to help students build their skills or be creative in the classroom by using teaching techniques that take a little bit more time. The students, and I'm not throwing shade at other subjects here, but you probably pick psychology because of units covering mental health, relationships, memory and attachment, you thought these topics would be interesting and valuable to know beyond just getting a qualification. That's always been true, but when you're on the course as a student, it can sometimes feel more like you've signed up for a memory competition, rushing through theories, studies and evaluations in a way that can reward people with the best recall of facts over those who just want to spend the time needed to fully understand these important ideas. So as you can tell, I'm really hopeful. But in reality, we'll have to see how this all works out after teaching it, especially how these changes affect grades. The percentage of people AQA award each grade to is always pretty stable, and I don't see them changing this. But as the quantity of information students need to recall is being reduced, you'd expect performance to improve as more teaching and revision time can be focused on less content. So perhaps the question difficulty will increase. But my gut feeling is actually what will happen is the grade boundaries will shift up a little bit, meaning you'll need to score higher to get the same grade as previous years. But as long as the same proportion of students get the same grade, it should be fair overall. When it comes to what's been cut, much of it seems to be older and discredited or problematic studies and theories, which I've often justified as important in the history of psychology, but this is supposed to be a course on the modern science of psychology. So if anything needs to go, I'm glad it's the older stuff we used to teach more for context. There is one change I want to focus on as an example of me personally seeing AQA really listening to the teaching community. And that's the significant changes made to the gender unit. Now I've taught the gender unit in the classroom with students who had just begun to question their gender identity and those that were already in the process of transitioning. While I made sure those students felt supported, it was very difficult teaching a unit that included terminology and theories that were completely outdated to the point of being problematic. And even though the unit was about gender, it didn't include content that directly addressed their experience in a way that made them feel included. So while I tried my best as a classroom teacher, I knew the content I had to cover made those students feel uncomfortable, which is not an experience I want anyone to have in my classroom. With Psych Boost, in total, my gender videos have been watched over 100,000 times now, and I had to start the series basically with an apology for what I was about to cover. Now, the reason I said I've personally experienced AQA listening to feedback is over the years of doing this channel and going to teacher conferences, I've been lucky enough to get to know the head of AQA psychology, and I found them to be very open to listening to feedback, including my concerns about the gender unit. And I know they've listened to similar feedback from other teachers, and I feel they've really reflected on that feedback with these changes. So with the new unit, sex and gender are clearly separated, and gender identities are included, so binary, non-binary, and gender fluid. Freud's theories on gender are finally gone, and the terms atypical gender development and gender dysphoria have been replaced with gender incongruence. This is a positive change, because the new terminology is more affirmative and destigmatizing. The previous terms frame gender diversity as a deviation from the norm, whereas the updated language acknowledges the experience without suggesting an abnormality or pathology. Now, I don't think it's perfect. Perhaps I would have explicitly included some non-Western concept of gender, and there are some great examples like two-spirit identities. It would have been a good move as the specification as a whole needs more cross-cultural content as it's really Western focused. But of course, I can use evaluations for this in my resources and I hope they make their way into classrooms. But these changes to gender are a massive improvement. As I said, it's a great example of AQA reflecting on feedback and being willing to update the specification based on changes in research and society. 
So I'm looking forward to updating my gender series for the next generation of students. And I really hope after the changes come through, more teachers decide to pick gender as an optional unit. As right now, it's not often chosen as an option, possibly because of similar issues to the ones I experienced. Now, it's important to point out, this is just a spec update, not a new specification. So there may have been bigger changes that people had hoped for, but the current spec is 10 years old now. On my wish list for the next specification is a completely rewritten and more inclusive relationship unit. One that explicitly covers LGBT identities and relationships and non-traditional relationship styles. It would also be nice to explicitly include the work of some non-Western and more female researchers. When I looked at the names that actually appeared in the spec, everyone was Western. This update hasn't changed that. I would also like an entire unit on cognitive neuroscience. It's the cutting edge of modern psychological research. From my experience, more and more medicine candidates are taking psychology at A-level, and this is the area they're most interested in. And right now, it seems relegated to an after-four-in-one approach. Finally, I imagine a lot of students who sign up for the A-level hope by knowing a little bit more about psychology, they can learn more about themselves and how to use that knowledge to live better lives. That's certainly the reason I did it as a degree. For that reason, I would love for there to be a unit on positive psychology. So much of what we cover is on mental illness or things like the negative effects of social influence. Positive psychology is the study of happiness and optimal human functioning. And who doesn't want to be more resilient and find meaning and purpose, especially the world we're living in right now? Anyway, that's what I'll be advocating for in the next specification. If you have any suggestions, get them in the comments. I would love to read them. That was my overall opinion. Now I'm going to cover each individual unit, starting with the massive cuts to social influence. Identification as a type of conformity is out, which is a good move as honestly, it can be hard to clearly distinguish it from internalization and compliance. The big change is the removal of Zimbardo. This was pretty controversial as the announcement was made a few days after Zimbardo's death. But of course, these decisions would have been made months before the announcement, so it was just unfortunate timing. In my opinion, Zimbardo was a legend in psychology and did great work popularizing the subject. And he made a real difference with his heroic imagination project. He also seemed to be a really nice and charismatic guy. But honestly, I'm glad the Stanford Prison Experiment has gone. I knew the SBE was heavily criticized, but after reading the Latexia paper debunking the Stanford Prison Experiment, I was convinced the flaws in the research are so deep it just doesn't belong on the A-level. I know a lot of teachers will disagree with me, and that is fine. I understand why. I really enjoyed teaching it. I have loads of resources for it. It's dramatic, so one of my students' more enjoyable studies to learn. I've even shown the film adaptation version as my end-of-term Christmas movie. But on reflection, I really think it's the right bit to cut. Cutting the role of social influence processes in social change is a smart move. You did end up effectively rewording minority influence into a larger context, so really, the students are not missing out on much by taking that away. When it comes to memory, it's not much of a change. Losing types of long-term memory isn't going to change much in terms of teaching, as it's such a simple concept. Chances are you're going to discuss the types briefly anyway as an evaluation of the MSN. And I think Clive Waring is such an interesting case study, and the only full-length documentary I show the first-year students. But now it doesn't make that much sense to go into detail with Clive as types of LTM is out, which I think is a bit of a shame. The rest of the changes simplify phrasing, which is good as the previous way the bullet points were phrased had me second guessing the way AQA would ask a question. So I'm happy to see that change. But yeah, I think the loss of LTM is a shame. I would have much preferred AQA to take out the cognitive interview, as it seems to be not a super common interviewing technique. And you can include all the interesting criminal psychology bits of memory into the eyewitness testimony section. Huge reductions to attachment, with the removal by far the most significant bullet point. I'm honestly surprised I would have thought that this content is at the core of the unit, and taking multiple attachments and the role of the father out removes some of the conversations around the diversity of attachment in infants' lives. Now the unit becomes very mother-centric. I would have taken out the last bullet point on adult relationships. That section seems quite repetitive, as you probably covered the internal working model earlier with Balby, and you're basically retelling attachment types and saying, yeah, this holds up in adulthood. So the unit's now much shorter, so students will be happy. But I feel this is at the loss of some important areas. The rewording and reordering to English Romanian Orphans Project is good. It's clearer and more accurate now. Psychopathology or clinical psychology and mental health, as we need to call it now. This is the only unit that's had its name changed, and it does make sense, as the term clinical psychology is more accurate and used more frequently internationally. Also, on the first day of teaching, I do a quick overview of the spec, and I ask if the students can guess what the term psychopathology even means. And almost no one ever got it was about mental illness, with psycho being the mind and pathology being about diseases. So, diseases of the mind. So I guess the term is confusing to new students. 
The removal of the term abnormality is great, as clearly it's a bit problematic and inaccurate with the frequency of mental health conditions in society. From a personal perspective, these changes are a little bit annoying, as only the titles have changed. So I have to take the entire unit down, edit just to change the titles, and then re-upload. But, yeah, that's fine. Approaches has had a big change with the loss of Vunt. I'm glad mostly, as clearly Vunt's work is a little out of date, and there is disagreement if he's even truly the first psychologist, and it was only a small section. The problem I have is the origins of psychology as a science section was a great chance to introduce a bunch of terminology about science and make clear what psychology was all about right as you start the course. But it's fine, I'm sure I can redo that kicking off with behaviourism. It's just a shame they couldn't leave in just psychology as a science and take the rest away. Cognitive neuroscience. Removing the emergence of is a great move. Emergence of made it confusing how to teach this section, but now we can just clearly define what it is. Moving it from cognitive to biological psychology, that's fine, but I don't think there's a perfect place for it. And as a subsection of either approach, I worry it's just going to get lost. Honestly, linked to what I said earlier in this video, I would have been tempted to give it a bullet point of its own. It is the current cutting edge of research in psychology, and lots have been taken away in this spec update. Slightly expanding a pre-existing concept, so one 1.8 marker could be a 16 marker, would have been fine. I worry now, instead of just getting lost in the cognitive approach, it's just going to get lost in the biological approach. Simplification of models in cognitive is a great idea, as is simplification of genes in bio. And I have no issues with the removals from humanistic psychology. Still, you're going to be talking about the focus on the self anyway when talking about congruence, so I'm not sure if that's really a time saver. Actually, I'm a little surprised with the loss of counselling psychology, as it was pretty distinctive. When it comes to biological psychology, taking up biological rhythms in this section is brilliant. It was always hard to know the level of detail AKA wanted in this section. So the temptation was always to give too much information rather than too little. So just cutting the whole section is amazing, and honestly not a big loss for the unit, as I've always felt it's the least relevant section. I guess it makes sense to move ways of studying the brain up by one bullet point, talking about how we know about the brain first, before diving into the detail of the brain, which often involves a conversation about these techniques anyway. In research methods, not much has changed. The two cuts are great. Confounding variables are an absolute pain to explain clearly. And I think knowing content analysis is enough. Adding thematic analysis just makes both confusing. One of the few additions is the concept of control groups. And actually, it's pretty wild that was never part of the original specification. The other word changes are minor, but I do need to have a bigger think about the potential implications of the new phrasing. When it comes to issues and debates, one change is making the last bullet point about social sensitivity which I think social sensitivity was always supposed to be the focus anyway. I think the reason for this change is a question in a previous exam series. The answer was supposed to be about social sensitivity, but in the exam report it said something about many students just giving a few basic points about ethics. I think they likely just picked those up when studying research methods. So in the exam, they didn't explicitly focus on what social sensitivity is. Relationships has had evolutionary explanations taken out. I'm actually a little disappointed. I know it's controversial, but there was always a real opportunity in this section for a difficult but important debate about the reasons for such extreme gender differences in mating behaviour, and the use of biology as an excuse. If Anne was going to cut anything, I would have got rid of some of the theories of romantic relationships, as it becomes a bit of a slog to get through them all. Online relationships makes way more sense as a term, so a good change and the use of deception is a good term to make explicit, but I imagine it's already a big part of any teacher's resources, as who wouldn't talk about catfishing? Again, I'm a little gutted there isn't an explicit requirement to study cross-cultural variations, LGBT, or non-traditional forms of relationships. I've obviously spent a lot of time talking about gender already, and actually many of the less controversial sections are unchanged. A significant improvement without much work needed to adapt the unit. I don't teach cognition and development, but I'm a little surprised to see the reference to autism and theory of mind taken out. Cognition and development always seems to be short but complex, so maybe they're trying to reduce the complexity a little without taking too much out. In schizophrenia, taking reliability and validity out might not be the biggest change, as you still have to talk about these ideas when talking about comorbidity, culture and gender bias and symptom overlap, so I think the first bullet point is more of a reword than actual reduction of content. So the only thing gone really is token economies, and I'm not going to be losing any sleep about it as it always feels tacked on as it's not actually a treatment. Eating behaviour is one of the two units I'm least familiar with, and there seems to be minor changes so I won't say any more on this one. Stress is the other unit I don't know much about, but again there's basically no change, so moving on. There is literally no change to regression. I really like the regression unit, so I'm glad there's no changes. If I was going to cut anything, I would have removed ethological explanations, and maybe expanded out evolutionary to fill the bullet point. The changes to forensics are significant. 
Lombroso's atavistic is gone, much like other old discredited research on the A-level, so it's all good to me. Even though it's just part of one bullet point, the taking out of psych dynamic is pretty big, as you need to really go into detail to explain what it is. And there's already a lot going on in that bullet point. Obviously, fans of Freud will be disappointed to see him taken out of another unit, but he's still in approaches. I like the terminology change from top down and bottom up, as I tend to find you have to explain why each one was the way around it was, it was a little confusing, and added absolutely nothing to the description of the profiling technique. I'm not as familiar with addiction, but focusing on the last bullet point on Prochesca makes sense to me, as the unit felt like it had too much content when it made the revision video. In fact, I'm surprised more hasn't been taken out. And those are my reflections. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thanks to my patrons, and I'll see you in the next Psych Boost video.